contraband products are proving a headache for the country's brewers. Heineken Malaysia's MD Hans Esandi says outside the general economic consideration, cheap counterfeit and smuggled alcoholic beverages are a major concern for the industry. Calling contraband products a real threat, he says they represent a significant revenue loss to both the industry and the government. The brewer reported its first quarter earnings today, which dipped 3.7% to 49 million ringgit. Revenue took a bigger hit, shrinking by 12.5% to 401 million ringgit. This was mainly due to the soft market sentiment and timing of the Chinese New Year festive season sales. ECM Libra says it has yet to identify any potential M&A targets to expand its business following the disposal of its investment banking and securities business in 2012. MD Lim Kian On says the company is actively looking at various opportunities and has been bidding for various projects including a hotel project in Sri Lanka. Explaining that it has applied for many different things which included property development projects, basically anything that would add value to shareholders but the group hasn't quite decided what it wants to do. However, he was quick to add that things should become clearer in a while. As for the project in Sri Lanka, Kenon said there has been no official award yet, but reassures that ECM Libra is not in a hurry. Our boys in blue have completed their probe into 1MDB and it's now up to the Attorney General's chambers to decide if there is a case for prosecution. If you remember, the police had formed an investigation team to look into a report by the Public Accounts Committee last April. Among the key takeaways, the bipartisan committee had found restrictions and weaknesses at the Troubled Wealth Fund and that its former chief, Cheryl Helmy, must be further investigated. IGP Khalid Abu Bakar told the press today that the investigation papers are now with the AG's chamber. He also clarified that his men are not involved in the investigation into SRC International. The investigation was carried out under Section 409 and 420 of the Penal Code for Breach of Trust and Fraud. Investors, particularly those in the affluent segment, are expected to continue pumping funds into foreign assets throughout 2017. These assets are not limited to stocks. They also include non-ringgit bonds and unit trust funds. Stanchart Bank Malaysia's Danny Chang says it looks like clients will continue to hold foreign currencies. He says it's a trend that's been witnessed at both the bank and industry levels and expects it to continue throughout this year. One reason is of course the depreciation of the ringgit, but the pattern can be attributed to two other factors. According to Chang, one is the increased efforts of banking institutions to educate investors about diversifying their portfolio to include ringgit and non-ringgit assets. The second is the increasing supply of such financial products, which in turn amplifies the demand from investors. MLM company Zulian Corp saw earnings double in its first quarter of FY17. Net profit came in at 105.6% higher at 14.56 million ringgit. This as the company incurred some 3.5 million ringgit in separation employment benefit expenses in the same quarter last year. Revenue-wise, it recorded a marginal increase of 0.4% to 48.38 million ringgit. It declared an interim dividend of 1.5 cent per share. Moving forward, the group says it will continue to revive the domestic market. At the same time, it plans to explore untapped markets in other ASEAN countries. Zulian also has plans to explore new opportunities by venturing into other businesses. It will also look at increasing revenue contribution, especially from the Thailand and Myanmar markets. This, it said, would drive growth momentum for the overall Indo-Chinese market. <laughs> 